three. Hey, I'm here in Barcelona at the Flesh and Blood World Championship with Lau Allen and Team Blue Pitch. Congratulations on the amazing run, guys. Woo! So, top 16 is stacked with Blue Pitch. Yeah. So, yeah. Tell me, like, how many of you did end up in the top 16? We got uh, two in the top eight and two in the top 16. Man, that's so amazing. Tell me, like, what heroes did you play? Uh, I'm Alan now, uh, the captain of the Team Blue Pitch, and the Barcelona, I play the OG Dash. Yeah. The original Dash, uh, Inventor Extraordinary. Amazing. So, you already have your starting item here, right? Yes, so this is my uh, main boss starting item, and I will talk about a little later why I'm starting this. And I got a... I got a only six equipment in my deck, which I guess is fewer than the normal dash. And first of all, we got a Crown of Providence, uh, which is the best choice of the deck. And we got a Tackle Foundry Heart, uh, which I think uh, every dash will be using, every, every hybrid dash will be using. And I got a Adaptive Planting, uh, which is a new buff from the uh, Bright Lights, and it's very good and it's strictly upgraded from the Galvanic Bender which uh, some dash already used and in the late game if you can destroy your item to give it plus two to block some break crawl and I only play the Tackle Plasma Pistol and this is a very beautiful go ball that I open and the only legs I play is the uh, Accelerators and I got a, I got a model eye for the uh, Wizard Metro so, so we are going into the main deck now, right? Yep. We but go before we before we go into the main deck, tell us like how did your score went up in the classic constructed in the world championship? Yeah, uh, I did end up uh, eleven and three at the worlds and seven one in the uh, CC bracket, and I feel very uh, happy about my deck choice, and I'm going to introduce now. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so I, I'm starting with the only three offs, uh, which is also the most important key pass in the deck. So free pulse wave harbor, uh, amazing. Uh, the only way, the only reason you're playing the mechanologist uh, uh, is amazing against every matchup, and I I strongly suggest everyone to get free. And the new buff from the uh, right side. Twin drive. Uh, usually it's uh, full tilt in the bright light, but uh, with the combo with uh, pulse wave harpoon, uh, the maximum velocity and the high octane is very good to have three of those. And and then we come up with the free maximum velocity, uh, which is the core to break through the fatigue matchup. And every time I played it, uh, it feels very good and. And we're starting, and we have an also free off uh, high octane. Uh, this card is amazing. No matter you're shooting pistol with extra two, or you get a item with a spark of genius, it's both very amazing. And I suggest that uh, if you have to play a longer matchup, you should generate uh, free four at least uh, extra free action point uh, with the high octane. Otherwise, you won't get enough. Uh, value of it and we got a free off uh, tackle course and a free off uh, tackle plunder uh, I saw many people they don't pay the full set of the items because they are afraid of uh, in some turn they don't have the block and they don't like it but uh, I listened to my some very good dash player in Hong Kong and the reason why I chose to pay sex is because you need to have the uh, upside for, for your going first to increase your chance to get the item and when I get the item uh, I usually will have a big advantage no matter which it is a uh, tackle panda or the tackle course so I'm starting with the something that uh, which is more than free and also uh, the first starting with first we get a uh, I don't know how to pronounce uh, SP broadcast uh, I call it 
I got a uh, two reds and uh, three blues. Uh, is the reason that why I play this is because I want to enlarge the zero cost. I want to lower my cost curve, and the the benefit of me to lowering the cost curve is because uh, I have I have to re rely on my maximum velocity and the high take, and also easier for X equals to free pulse rate power. So although this card might not as good as they look like, and I still have to play it because I want to lower my curve, and I choose this over other two zero for B is because uh, it sometimes it has an upside of it. Uh, don't rely on that and just hit, treat them at a zero for B. And, and then we're starting with the. 60 bones. Uh, the reason is very similar to the this one, and also uh, T bone has an upside against some some uh, some matchup which has lots of uh, temper or break break equipment. And this six is uh, I will point a uh, crew on the deck. Uh, it's not amazing, but uh, it it can. Uh, Makes your curve lower and you can pay more boost card in your turn. And so uh, the next is the very uh, OG one. Uh, every dash should pay 9 of this, it's the 0 of 60s. Uh, I guess I don't have to much introduce since they they play they print uh, 0 to 50 to throw us. <laughs> and and it's so it's this card how how amazing and they they won't spin the card like this again easily line off so and then the super hit uh, also amazing and you know uh, you know those card from original ARC is pretty good and so that they when they print the bright size they have to add some limitation and things so. Uh, so they print the jump start, which is uh, when you have a hyper driver, it's a super hit. But uh, I think my deck uh, didn't pay any uh, hyper drivers, so this night off is, uh, I think, is nearly an auto include in the most of the hybrid dash deck. And, and then we move on to the uh, photo, uh, which is also a night off. Uh, I think. The most surprising one of the majority hybrid dash player is I choosing to play three yellow photos and instead of the combustor Korea, uh, which is uh, two plus four uh, when it hit gain is gains uh, plus three for your next boost attack. The reason why I choose this because uh, in the Panda matchup uh, when I didn't draw the uh, the maximum velocity mm -hmm. and how thing. Uh, usually I don't have, if I have a bull, usually I don't end up to using all my pitch. So I decided to play a uh, yellow throttle. So when my, when my turn means like a uh, blue with a uh, blue yellow throttle and some zero cost and one cost, uh, which is uh, maximize my blue pitch value. And it's also very impressive that uh, it's coming for five. Uh, which I will talk about a very funny strategy why this is very important and I think uh, yellow photo is uh, to be changed uh, if you want and but th those uh, free blue and free red is amazing so uh, we got the ah yeah we missing this but we talked about it uh, spark genius uh, no need to explain uh, so we got uh, Codex from Ferrati in the Outsiders. Uh, before that, uh, we got Spark Genius. Uh, we it's so amazing that you can get a uh, Taco Core usually for free, and then you also draw a card from it. So, uh, so barely is uh, at least a seven value because uh, you draw a card is free, barely, and then you have a four. You have a uh, you have a taco core, which is I assume is a four value because it can provide four resources. Yeah. And this guy is amazing. It helps me win a lot of cash. And the 
final one is a singleton root data link. Uh, I actually uh, it is originally originally the third red SP rocket, and I I have to uh, special mention uh, my friend's fun. Uh, he told me that uh, that card was not very good most of the time, so he told me to change it instead of paying one extra bull no matter what. And then I end up with a uh, data link, uh, which is uh, the reason why I have uh, some rules in some sometimes, which is very important, and it could be changed to and other things. But uh, I think so. I'm paying twenty bull, and this extra bull is pretty much good. And so this is my main board, and I will move on to the sideboard right now. And. First of all, I get a I Ultra Respect to the Bravos and 3 Fate, 3 Sync, 2 Reinforce and uh, Unmovable. Uh, the reason why I played Light Defense Reaction in this tournament because I heard there's lots of uh, great, play, great Bravo players like uh, Kale McGriff and, and some Dagon White they all lead on Bravos and I, they are amazing players and so you always want to have some defense reaction against them and I will start talking about uh, free sync and free fate because my deck is not it's not as uh, same as the other dash player they paid 23, 24 blues which I can't afford so I decided to cut the movables for the uh, reinforce the line, I uh, play free sync, free fate and I think majority of that I saw the list on February, they don't play fate and I strongly advise they play fate because sometimes you will have to pay the punter and you, you, you get a chance to pay a punter and then with the fate for C, you can actually boost sometimes which I think uh, some some dash player may get uh, some dash player may Bravo may get some dash player off guard if they, they don't play this a lot because originally everyone thinks uh, Bravo is a good matchup for dash but uh, when they have uh, belting, uh, rouse the Asians and then some crush effect uh, it's, it's quite tough and I would say and I strongly advise you pay free free faith for scene in this deck uh, and free sync uh, not have to talk about it. Uh, it's amazing, and you have to you you can sink when you have extra defense reaction, so you get your hands mover. And to reinforce the line uh, is the very important against Bravo, because the sometimes you lose is lose to the CNC pummels, which uh which. You, which can be afforded by playing reinforce the line when you can very easily lean on uh, six block and then wait to wait them to play the problems. So the last is the unmovable. Uh, I was thinking a lot about the last spot of this. It could be the third poppers, and it could be the third reinforce the line. And I end up with the unmovable because uh, I find out that two reinforced, three re reinforced line is very hard to hard to use. And unmovable is great when you use all your all of your armors and you can one card to block the creeping crush. So this is uh, basically for the for the Bravo's matchups. And you might wonder will this play into Dory as well? Uh, I, I have a very interesting way that uh, I won't pay these two reinforce the line and I will pay this six defense reaction and also boost him. So uh, I will I will link a uh, February link and you can see the sideboard. And so this is uh, the defense reactions and we get an uh, extra purpose from the big shot. Uh, my, me and my friend, me and Bun testing about it is uh, this bot is uh, should it be big shot or the over uh, the payload mm -hmm. and after we testing a lot we think that uh, 
we 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 use one extra one extra point. We use one resource for extra two. Is uh, quite is much better than the payload because sometimes payload doesn't give an extra extra point, and you you can use uh, one you can trade one resource for two extra damage. So I end up with the big shot in it, and the final fee spot is the one chamber and two purified. And the reason why I paying only three items in it is because uh, every time paying this uh, item is such a tempo loss, and I want to avoid it. And I think uh, at at least uh, I I paid a lot of Bravo in the practice, and I found out that most of the time I don't have time to pay the second chambers. So I. I think more time I win is uh, when I play some purify and then uh, combo with the hard attack and it's the key to win not to just uh, be a turtle to block everything and it's co it will cost you a game and I think this all my sideboard and yeah uh, yeah let's show it once more yep. so these are all the cards in your deck yep. let's talk about the tournament yeah you already said that in CC you only lost one round. Yeah. To which player and on which hero did you lose? Uh, I lost to a uh, also a Hong Kong player called Alex Lo. Uh, he is very talented, uh, two times Hong Kong national topic. And the round I lost to him is uh, when I go up to when I is extremely advantage when uh, six, 16 to one. And then I drew a uh, three items hand and a uh, zero block hand uh, and a uh, blue table. Uh, but uh, it's also a part of game. So uh, he played also very well. And this is my only loss in the tournament. And uh, my other seven runs is uh, I have uh, against a uh, dash IO in the in the first round. Uh, he is. Uh, New Zealand national champions, and uh, I I boosted, and then he didn't get his luck, and he failed. And and the second round I play against uh, what is this? I play against uh, oh yeah, I play against a Bolton, uh, which is uh, I want to say sorry because my cyber guy didn't have a Bolton, and. <laughs> You might need to think by yourself, but that matchup, I uh, I was choosing a uh, chamber, and then I think he's close to a close to a uh, mirror cycle, and uh, I I I asked I used to play a lot with uh, Josh, which is a very talented uh, bottom player. Maybe the one of the best bottom player in the world, and against it, you can't pay too aggressive. You can't pay too defensive, and you just the the most easy way is uh, you sit on a house wave harpoon in your arsenal when they try to make a big turn of it. Then you just pay your house wave harpoon when there's no block, because usually they will block some block a lot, and when you wait sit on an arsenal with a house wave harpoon, then you can destroy their turn. So my third one is uh, Livia or Levia and it's the second of better heroes uh, which I also don't have a sideboard on it. Uh, it is uh, I, I tested with my uh, dash partner Bun, and he told me to pay Panda because uh, most of the Livia they don't play the uh, Smash I guess and I, I, I listened to his advice and I get to boost to the win. And the fourth one is uh, I, I talk about uh, Alex. Uh, he, I lost into, lost into his kazoo and I got two one in the I got two one in both draft pots, uh, which uh, also pain all pain mess. And, and then uh, I end up uh, nine. Nine three, uh, seven three, and begin with the final session of the classical construct. 
and my first run is uh, Paul, uh, which is uh, Icelander. Uh, I think he, he almost fatigued me with uh, 66 that which which surprised me because I think majority of Icelander they usually play 60. And I but I think this is a good matchup for the uh, dash. Uh, the common mistake of the dash player is they playing the purify because they are too afraid to get fatigued by an Icelander. But uh, I have a strategy I, I will talk about in the video last and I then I pick a Nick Butcher. Uh, he is a draw my player. And I I started with uh, industrial chamber and I got very lucky for I got a first turn ponder. But uh, he 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 know the matchup very well and then he blocked a lot. So my deck is uh, reducing very fast and I end up with barely taking it down with uh, only I think five to six cards in the deck. Uh, it's a very close game and I think uh, it's most recent is the because uh, they don't have to, they don't play against a lot with the non purify dash and I end I I get destroyed by my teammates because they know I end up <laughs> I end up with the I I don't play the purify so they will choose some uh, different way I uh, compare with the Nick and I'm happy uh, I'm very glad that I practice with my teammates uh, they help me a lot with the draw my cycle and then the third one I play against uh, Nave Hughes Nathan uh, he is a uh, fatigue Dory players and 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 uh, in the day one uh, I saw I saw I saw Fun told me that uh, uh, you have to notice that it's a uh, fatidori around and I think okay and I face it in the round 13 uh, I was I have a uh, sideboard on the February but it's not good against fatidori so I I starting to put uh, all of my cards so including all the sideboard to submit in but I, I think that we you can cut uh, the unmovables, then you can pay 73 cards into it if you know your opponent is a uh, Fatigue Doris. Uh, it's a very a, a interesting approach against Fatigue Doris. Is you, you, usually, you get your uh, Spark of Genius, you will start getting your Purify first because it's more efficient line. But against Fatigue Doris, you have to prepare, you have to pay, you have to. If you get a buff genius, you have to grab your tackle partner first. The reason why is because they play the Imperial, Imperial Horde and once once one of these get destroyed in the early game, then you are finished. So I get to slam a partner and then I use two of this of of the steam account and then I stay the last pun, steam counter on the partner and then I play tempor temporarily and I set up with my two profile and then use a how tank and then boost 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 and then four 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 to end it. Uh, I but he also give me insane pressure, which I can't afford to not boost with my last tackle bundle. And then of course he he had the arsenal, the imperial horn, and then I know it. But uh, I already got in into one, and then I set on uh, uh, how tank in my arsenal, which barely close the game out if the hard thing wasn't good enough to close the code itself and I think I will get a loss. So the last one is uh, Aaron Sesson. Uh, sorry if I mispronounce it. Uh, atomic players, uh, top 4 seat. And also very good players. Uh, I used the same strategy against Nick to him because I saw they both play Mage Master Boost. So, but uh, he is playing relatively aggressive, and I get a, and I get a very not good start with uh, he I, when he is full life and I only get twenty eight with he is on four edge wing on the board. So at that moment, uh, I thought I well, I'm going to lose, but uh, I end up 
winning it because uh, usually I won't I won't do uh, I won't kill the Ash Wing because uh, wasting two damage on the Ash Wing is not efficient. But uh, also uh, I have to mention Bun again. He told me to kill the every Ash Wing before the thirty life. So I listened to his advice and. I end up to catching uh, more closer and closer and then I crawl back and I think the reason why I can crawl back because uh, they draw my player overestimate how strong the one cost dragon is but instead of that they they have to pitch one card for the dragons and in, I think Every time they play Kyloria, uh, what's that called? Uh, Mirror Guy, and these two, uh, they had a huge tempo loss. And I know it sounds strange, but every time they play it, uh, my win rate will get a little bit up because it's such, it's 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 just like my profile. It's a tempo loss for this. So I end up, I end up very close. I use all of my every single card in my deck, and then I get it with a uh, how take turn in the last. So uh, this is basically all of my tournament experience and my feelings and I hope if, I hope if you are a dash enjoyer you can learn something from the for the from this uh, video tech and yeah thank you. Tell us before we close out the video, last year world championship, how did that one go for you? Yeah last year I also stick on the uh, this dash, OG dash, and I end up with the ninth place, uh, which is heartbreaking. But after after years, uh, I learned more about this deck, and and I have to play more patiently. And although I, this year I also cannot make into uh, top eight, but I think back to back top sixteen is also very impressive. So uh, at the last, uh, I, I said that uh, that's very strange, uh, very simple but very special strategy to against the player they want to block a lot to. It's called a two five eight strategy. Uh, what is what is this does is uh, every attack you try to make it two, which is the pistol or the blue boost card, and then the five. Uh, which is the super hit, the blue yellow photo, and then come up with eight, uh, which very less. But uh, with there's some example when you have a ponder, then you pay a red photo of it. So the reason why it's, uh, two five extra G is uh, very important to my tournaments is because there's not a very argo matters, and most of them they will block a lot. Icelanders, uh, Dromites, they block a lot. So the reason why this is uh, effective is because every t every card in the in Fresh and Blood they mostly have three blocks. At both four block, uh, that's a, that's the different reaction. So using the two five X strategy, if you pay two, they won't. If they block a three, they will leak one. Uh, they will waste one one value. And if you pay five. At worst, you will get a sink below of A for C, so it's also the king one, and it's also same approach on the eight, which uh, which uh, my approach is every time he blocks with a three blocks, they need to lead two damage, and most of the time you keep doing this will increase your win rate against those decks they want to block you, and yeah, that's that's all. Thanks so, for having me. Yeah, I want to say like it's so amazing to talk to you about your deck at this moment, right after the top eight announcement. Yeah. Congratulations to your amazing run and the great performance. Yeah, thank you. And all the best of luck to your teammates for the top eight. Yeah, I'm going to rooftop for them. Yeah. See you next time. Yeah. Thanks.